So now you're about to learn something called differentiation from first principles. If you're kind of half watching this video and not really paying attention, bad idea. Differentiation from first principles is very, very difficult, uh, at least to grasp the first time around. Uh, it's a little bit conceptual and there are a lot of mathematical steps involved. So drop what you're doing, get a pen and paper, take some notes. Now it's all been built You'll remember we've spoken about average rates of change before, finding two points, drawing a line between them, finding rise over run. You'll also remember we've talked about instantaneous rates of change, taking those two points and moving them closer and closer and closer and closer and closer together until they're almost touching. You'll also remember that we talked about the gradient function. If I know a function and I graph the gradient of that function at each point, I get this nice little gradient function here. Now, there is a way to look at the original function and calculate what the gradient function is. There is an easy way and there is a difficult way. Differentiation from first principles is the difficult way and you definitely need to know how to do it. So we're not going to do it with this function here because differentiation from first principles with a cubic is not impossible and you'll be able to do it eventually but it's probably not a good one to start doing so we're going to do it on an easier one to begin with so here's the function that I am going to differentiate from first principles it's f of x equals 3x squared minus 4x plus 2 so a quadratic and I'm going to find out what its gradient function is by using differentiation from first principles now, I'm going to get rid of the numbers on the x-axis and the number on the y-axis because I think that's just going to confuse us. All right, that's a pretty nice picture. Let's screenshot it and take it into OneNote. All right, so here's the function. And now I've gotten rid of the numbers because I just don't want them to distract us. I'm going to put a random point on here. And I'm going to call that point, uh, the x, well, the x value of that point, I'm going to call it x. Now, that means that if the x value is x, then the y value must be f of x. So, if the x value, if that value was 2, the y value would be f of 2. So, if I just put in a random x, an unknown, then this is also just going to be f of x. Now, I'm going to put another point on here. Now, it's going to be super close to this one, but I'm not going to put it super close. I'm just going to put it over here, just so we can see everything. Now, this one, I'm going to call it point x plus h. So the x value here is x plus some amount of distance called h, just a, a, just a small amount of distance called h. So the x value is x plus h. So if this was 2, this would be 2 plus h. h is a small number, so 2.01. And that means that the y value is f of x plus h. All right. So what I've done is managed to put on two points here without ever talking about a number. Now, this could be 2, and this could be f of 2, and this could be 2.01, and this could be f of 2.01, but I'm not doing numbers. I'm just saying a number, a number, a number plus a bit, a number plus a bit. Now, the reason I've done that is because I want to find the gradient function. So, the gradient function is f dash x. And the gradient between these two points is going to be y2 minus y1, that's y1, over x2 minus x1. Uh, so that's, let's try this, y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. Now I'm going to add a little bit in there in a minute, but this is just so you get a feel for where we're at. So that means that f dash x equals, I'm just going to leave a space here because I'm going to add something in there in a minute, y2, which is f of x plus h, minus y1, which is f of x, 
all over x plus h minus x. Now, I said I was going to add in a little bit uh, on the end in the, in the beginning of it here, and it's new notation, you really haven't seen this before, and that is the limit LIM, the limit as h approaches 0. So the limit as h approaches 0, f of x plus h minus f of x over x plus h minus x. I told you h was a really small number. It's so small that we write h is approaching 0. It's not 0, but it's getting super duper close to 0, and that's the way that we write it. I can write one more line here. f dash x equals the limit as h approaches 0 of f of x plus h minus f of x x plus h minus x, the x's cancel each other out, h. This formula is really where the action starts. That formula is how you differentiate via first principles, differentiation from first principles. So we've got f of x plus h. That means we're putting x plus h into f of x. So another line here f dash x equals the limit as h approaches 0 of, and this is where the working gets really big, f of x plus h is x plus h put in here. So it's 3 bracket x plus h, x plus h squared minus 4 bracket x plus h bracket plus 2. So I've taken this function and I've put x plus h everywhere where x was, and then I'm going to subtract from that f of x. That's f of x. So I can just write that down. And you've got to be a bit careful with this one. So you're subtracting the whole function. So it's minus 3x squared minus 4x plus 2. So you're subtracting all of that. So that ends up sort of turning all the signs around in a second. Now all of that is divided by h. All right, now it's time to just go real algebra crazy here. It's still f dash of x. I don't have to write that every time. Limit as h approaches 0 of. Now we need to expand these brackets. I'm going to show you how to do that up here because I sort of don't want it to be part of my main working x plus h squared is the same as x plus h times x plus h. That's going to be FOIL method, first, outer, inner, last. So it's x squared plus hx plus hx plus h squared. That's the same as x squared plus 2hx plus h squared. So, and then the whole thing's multiplied by 3. So I'll save that until another step, but that's 3 x squared plus 2hx plus h squared minus distributive law minus 4x minus 4h plus 2 and then all of this function is negative so it's negative 3x squared negative negative 4x so positive 4x negative, positive 2, negative 2, all over h. Okay, I'm going to work through. I'm just going to expand those brackets. All right, so I've expanded those brackets. I've got this big, long thing on the top, h on the bottom. Now, let's take a look at... Uh, the function itself. If you've done all of this correctly, then you're going to end up with a bunch of things you can cancel. So 3x squared, negative 3x squared, sweet. Negative 4x, positive 4x. Positive 2, negative 2. Alright, let's rewrite it with all of that cancelled stuff taken out.
All right, looking pretty good so far. We've written it with all of that cancelled stuff taken out. We end up with 6hx plus 3h squared minus 4h all over h. Now what you should notice is that these h's, they're in every term. So I can factorise. h comes out as a common term. That's a h. 6x plus 3h minus 4 all over h. All right, looking good so far. We've got h bracket 6x plus 3h minus 4 all over h. This is h times this divided by h. Those will cancel out. We end up with the limit as h approaches 0 ends up being 6x plus 3h minus 4. One last step and I think we're done. Now this limit as h approaches 0 has been following us through this entire equation. Now it is a little bit of mathematical trickery and I'm happy to talk one on one about this but we're saying that h gets closer and closer and closer to 0. So as h gets closer and closer and closer to 0, this function gets closer and closer and closer to 6x plus 3 times 0 minus 4. It's an important distinction, uh, but it doesn't really change much for us. Basically, we take this and we plug 0 in for our h because we're saying h gets closer to 0. So when we get rid of the limit, we're saying the limit as h approaches 0 of this function is 6x minus 4. The h disappears because we're doing 3 times 0, double quotes. All right, so what does all this mean for us? It means that with our initial function, f of x equals 3x squared minus 4x plus 2, the derivative function or the gradient function of that function can be found using differentiation from first principles, and it is 6x minus 4. Uh, I'm going to briefly show you that. This was our original function, 3x squared minus 4x plus 2. What's our gradient function? 6x minus 4. This straight line tells us the gradient at every single moment. You can see the gradient here is really negative, so the line's all the way down there somewhere. You can see the gradient here is 0. 0. And you can see the gradient here is starts off quite low, increases, 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 and our gradient function is getting higher and higher and higher. We're getting higher y values because those y values tell us what the gradient was. All right, that is differentiation from first principles. Probably one of the most difficult things you'll be doing this term in terms of algebra. Um, but there it is.